Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship on this very exciting final Sunday in October. We are so very glad that you are here. It may seem a tad empty, but there's a whole army of processional people out there that you walked past, and when they all come inside, we're going to be a full house. I also want to welcome those who are worshiping with us online. We're so grateful that you are tuned in with us through our YouTube channel. If you did not arrive at our YouTube channel through our website, then I invite you to go to jcpcusa.org and click on uh, JCPC Online at the top left, and then scroll down, you'll be able to re, uh, find the bulletin for today as well as sign in and let us know that you're watching. Speaking of signing in, the friendship pads are on the inside of your pews. If you would, take a moment to grab that black pad and uh, jot your name down in there and record your attendance with us and pass it back and forth around your pews and uh, know that we are grateful for doing that. As I mentioned, it's uh, an exciting final Sunday of October, starting with the fact that it's Dedication Sunday. It's the conclusion of our tr more traditional stewardship campaign and season. So you should have received with your bulletin this morning, uh, if you did not already bring uh, your completed pledge card in time and talent form, then you would have received a blank pledge card in time and talent form. So uh, hold on to those things, and I'll talk more about them during this sermon, but we're grateful that you will be participating with us uh, using those instruments. It's also our Kirk and the Tartan service, in case you didn't notice all the plaid uh, and special things going on around you. Uh, in addition to Christian being with us for the first time in a while and already sharing his gifts with the flute, uh, I want to thank Robert, Ashley, and Valentina for playing bag bagpipes, drum, and cello. Uh, we've already heard Valentina playing the cello with uh, Christian a few moments ago so beautifully. Thank you for sharing your gifts, as well as uh, thank you to the choir for all their uh, normal sharing of gifts. And thank you also to the worship team for setting out all that wonderful stuff in the narthex uh, related to the history of uh, the Reformation and more. More thank yous. Uh, we all had uh, the opportunity to share a breakfast together this morning before worship down in the Great Hall, and so I want to thank the Connecting Team for all that they did uh, to provide sausage biscuits, uh, orange juice, coffee, and more. Uh, we're grateful for that fellowship opportunity. It was also an opportunity to uh, put your hands together and do some work, uh, some service work for our fifth Sunday mission project, and that was to stuff bags for turkey dinners uh, for Hands of Christ. And so thank you to all of you who would have either contributed groceries for that or and or stuffed the bags uh, last hour. We're so very thankful for all of that. More thank yous. The pumpkin patch ends tomorrow. Uh, in case you aren't looking at your calendar, tomorrow is Halloween, and so it's the natural end of a pumpkin patch. We're grateful to anyone and everyone who served, uh, who volunteered your time to take a shift, uh, who helped set up uh, weeks ago, and we're thankful in advance for anyone who can join us on Saturday morning, uh, a week from yesterday, uh, for the taking down of all of that stuff, the, the fencing and the lights and more. Uh, stay tuned for an exact time for that, but we're grateful for your help. Uh, last thing related uh, to the pumpkin patch, uh, because I wanted to make sure I thanked by name, Lisa, Honey, Jessica, Joan, and more. And speaking of Lisa... Um, the preschool is continuing their book fair uh, through this weekend, and so if you're interested in, in maybe grabbing a children's book or two or ten, um, go down to the Great Hall Atrium after the worship service and browse. Uh, Lisa will be available to take your payment, uh, whether it's cash or card, and uh, we will thank you in advance also for um, the ways that you support our preschool. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, page six in your bulletin. Uh, that's the listing of all the things that are coming up here at JCPC. Uh, it's really just a, an abbreviated version of what you read about in our Thursday Connections emails. But I want to say uh, something about next Sunday. It's also going to be a busy Sunday and wonderful in an entirely different way. We're going to get an extra hour of sleep. Daylight savings time ends next Saturday night into Sunday morning. Can I hear an Amen. Yeah, all right, good. I'm tired. I'm ready for more, more hours of sleep. So, uh, daylight savings time ends. Remember to set your clocks backward so that you're not going to show up at worship at the wrong time. Um, there's also going to be a lunch bunch meeting with Alice Ann at Pearl Eon. Sign up in the Narthex or talk to Alice Ann. And then finally, we're having communion next Sunday because it's the first Sunday of November. 
So, especially to those of you worshiping online, if you typically worship online, plan ahead and gather your elements, simple bread, crackers, and juice, and be ready to partake in the sacrament when we get to that part in next Sunday's worship service. My last announcement before I invite Zach up. Amongst all the things that you were handed when you walked into the sanctuary or to the chapel, you should have gotten a piece of paper that looks like this. It's a half size sheet, has lines at the bottom. We have reached the time when the elder nominating team is going to work on finding names to serve on the pastor nominating committee. Just like we did this past summer, uh, I'm inviting you for the next four weeks to share names of persons, whether you self-refer your, uh, or you talk to other people, um, but do check with people. Do not put their name down just because you like them. Um, the, the pastor nominating committee uh, acronym is PNC. The PNC is, is a, it's a hard work, but it's good work. It's, it's, it's work that will, will uh, create a sense of accomplishment in the end, um, but it's not for everybody. Okay, so ask around, think about who you know would be wonderful to serve on a search committee for your next installed pastor and use a form like this to put their name down in the future weeks or email Debbie at the church office. That's the information that's available to you in the Thursday Connections email. Very important that we get names from you over the next month. That's enough of my voice for now. I want to invite Zach Myers to come on up and talk about uh, green reorders. Hey, good morning. In just a few short weeks, the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season will be in full force. Our sanctuary and the buildings will be decorated for Advent before you know it. As we have had in the past, JCPC's relationship with Klein Church Nursery, who has supplied us with high quality Fraser fir trees, wreaths, and garlands for many years is continuing. The trees, wreaths, and garland are farm fresh and just beautiful. Ask anybody that's bought them before and they will tell you. First, the did you know. Did you know that you can order these beautiful trees, wreaths, and garlands for your homes right here at the church? The proceeds from the sale of these items go to support the worship and ministry teams at JCPC. Next, the do you know. Do you know how easy it is to order these? This order form is right back there. All you got to do is fill this out, drop it in the offering plate, or give it to a member of the worship and team or staff, and make your checks out to JCPC and indicate Christmas greenery on the memo line. Last, then you need to know. You need to know two very important dates. The first is the orders have to be in no later than Sunday, November 13th. The second, you can pick your order up from the church in the parking lot by the ball field Saturday, December 3rd, between 9 and 12. Any questions, please let us know, and Merry Christmas. Please remain seated for the processional of the tartans.
Amen. I would like you all to invite you all to stand in body or in spirit so that we can call ourselves to worship this day. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. In you we come home to rest, to wrestle, to love, to be loved. We dwell in you. Before the mountains were born, before you delivered the whole world, from everlasting past to everlasting future, you are God. In you we are home. We dream, we flourish, we fade, we rejoice, we dwell in you. Praise the Lord. Together, let us worship God. Friends, let us each present ourselves before the face of the Lord, confessing our sins and brokenness. Let us pray together, saying, Almighty God, Eternal Father, we acknowledge and confess to you that we were born in unrighteousness. Our life is full of sin and transgression. We have not gladly believed your word, nor followed your holy commandments. For your goodness sake and for your name's sake, be gracious unto us, we pray, and forgive us all our sins, which is very great. Amen. Sisters and brothers, this saying is true, and we should believe it that Christ Jesus came into the world to rescue sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and to alive to all that is good. In Christ, we are accepted just as we are and we are forgiven and set free to love one another 
as gentle children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. And And also with you. As God's forgiven people, let us take a few moments to extend Christ's peace to one another. Please be seated. (laughs) Let us pray. Almighty and ever gracious God, since all our salvation depends upon your holy word, therefore grant that our hearts may be set free from worldly things so that we may with all diligence and faith hear your word, rightly understand your gracious will, and in all sincerity live according to the same. To your praise and glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, and let all of God's people say, Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Psalms. I will be reading all of Psalm 122. While the words are printed in your bulletin as usual, since it is our special Kirkin O the Tartan service, I will be reading Psalm 122 using the Scots meter that Christians wrote about in his reflections message from this past Wednesday. Let us listen for the words, God's words, to us this morning. I joyed when I came to the house of God. Go up, they said to me. Jerusalem, within thy gates our feet shall standing be. Jerusalem, as a city, is compactly bound together. Unto that place that tribes go up, the tribes of God thither. To Israel's testimony, there to God's name thanks to pray. For thrones of judgment, e'en the thrones of David's house, they say. Pray that Jerusalem may have peace and felicity. Let them that love thee and thy peace have still prosperity. Therefore, I wish that peace may still within thy walls remain, and ever may thy palaces posterity remain. Now, for my friends and brethren's sake, peace be in thee, I say. And for the house of God our Lord, I'll seek thy good alway. To the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the God whom we adore, be glory as it was, as is, and shall be evermore. Amen.
this time I'd like to invite the children to come and join me for the children's message. The children, please come forward. And we're going to stay standing up today. We're going to stay standing up today because I want to make sure you can see everything. Thanks for coming down this morning. So, regular worship service today, huh? <laughs> see anything different? What's different today? Yeah, those. <laughs> anything else you see is a little different? Yeah, those guys, them too. <laughs> well, today, if you didn't pick up on it, we are kind of celebrating our history and our background as Presbyterians from back in Scotland. Does your family, have you ever been to a family reunion where your cousins come and your grandparents? Ever had one of those? That's a lot of fun. You get to catch up with people you don't know that are kind of related to you. Yeah, y'all are funny like that, aren't you? <laughs> family reunion all the time for you two. Well, this is kind of like a family reunion, and in Scotland, families had these different colors of, of fabric that are called tartans, and the different fabrics represent their families, which they called clans. Yes? Um, um, my big brother uh, and his friend was, um, was actually holding one of the flags. Oh, perfect. Well, that's, and that feeds in real nicely to the fact we're talking about these flags because all these flags represent different families, just like we have different families in this church and one of your, your brother's friends is in a different family than you are, but all together we are God's people and we are Christians and we are Presbyterian and we gather to celebrate the differences amongst our families but the fact that we are all the same and we all worship the same God and that's a wonderful thing. So thanks for sharing that with me. Um, will you pray with me, please? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for all the families here in Johns Creek and all over the world. Bless us so that we may do your work wherever that takes us. Amen. All right, thank you. We're not doing children's worship today, so go sit back with your parents and enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction into this part of the service. Uh, it, it reminds me that I want to thank pretty much all the staff for all the ways that you've contributed to this particular day whether it was for the breakfast and or the worship service. Uh, because it's Kirk and the Tartan service, hopefully by now you've noticed that there's a whole lot of extra information in your bulletin in italics. Uh, yes, it's a little smaller font, but um, on purpose, I've made sure to include a lot of information you may or may not have known about our uh, Reformation history and, and what all this stuff represents. But I wonder if among all those things you've noticed that we've had a couple of original music pieces by Christian for this very occasion. So thank you for that. <laughs> Wonderful. I told you all last week that I kind of got ahead of the Kirking game and the sermon included a little bit of Scottish information when I talked about those pigs. Uh, and uh, today's sermon is not going to be so much Reformation related uh, because we need to talk about um, the conclusion of this stewardship series. And since today is Dedication Sunday, in addition to Kirk and the Tartans Sunday, uh, I definitely am hoping that by now you've developed a much richer understanding of what stewardship is all about, um, how it's much more, uh, it's about much more than just dollars and cents. It is truly about uh, what we are calling fearless faith this year, having a fearless faith. Uh, specifically about how uh, having a more fearless faith uh, uh, helps us all love more fearlessly and uh, pray more fearlessly. Last week we talked about serving more fearlessly, and so today I need to talk to everybody about giving more fearlessly. But before I do, I'm going to share with you a scripture reading that you're probably going to wonder how in the world it has to do with stewardship. And that's the point, so that you'll pay attention. 
So let us uh, look here at Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, starting with verse 12. This is the very short story as captured in Luke's Gospel narrative about how Jesus chose um, the names of the twelve. Now during those days he went out to the mountain to pray. That is, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and Jesus spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, Jesus called his disciples and chose twelve of them whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the the, the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of wisdom, by your spirit, may your word be proclaimed, that we may know your good news in our hearts and our minds, and bear witness in both word and deed to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, quiet in us any voice but your own, that we might hear your word to us today and be prompted in our hearts to respond and to respond fearlessly. And let all God's people say, Amen. So three Sundays ago, <clears throat> three Sundays ago when um, I was uh, starting the, the first sermon in this four-part series, I said that I believe that generosity is the result and the ultimate outcome of understanding that God calls each and every single one of us to live our lives in the most Christ-like ways possible, which will lead us ultimately to think and act generously because we are following the model of our most generous God. And that means that when we uh, silly Presbyterians really do focus and get generosity and stewardship right, we realize that it truly is about how we live, what we believe, and how our faith gets expressed in all the ways that we love, pray, serve, and give. Today, as we now focus on the giving part, I want to assert to you that when it comes to giving, it's all about having a fairly profound sense of dedication, a sense of commitment toward whatever it is that we are giving to. So as with my other Fearless Faith sermons this month, I will begin by asking you a question. Two questions, actually. Number one, what is it about your faith and your relationship with God that is worthy of your dedication? And two, what is it that you value so highly about Johns Creek Presbyterian Church for which you will fearlessly give your time, your talent, and especially your money. I have to ask you that because it is so much more of an important question than it ever has been. Because the reality is that without your fearless dedication, without your fearless commitment, and your fearless giving, this church cannot be. No church can. Every church needs the support of its members and its friends, or it will cease to exist. It's just be- it's the business model. But people no longer give to churches the way that they once did. And this is a fact that has nothing to do with a pandemic. Here's a reality check on the broader headwinds that we face. The reality is that the church used to be the predominant charity in most every community in this country. (laughs) Because we were the only show in town. Because at the very most, we were only competing with other denominations. The appeal was simple. You should give to your church because it was the right thing to do. Or because your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents did. Or because the Bible tells us to do so. But like it or not, like a lot of things, 
those days are gone. The ship has sailed. And we have to face up to that reality. So while annual stewardship campaigns each fall may seem monotonous or even annoying, if we're being honest, and you can be, churches are compelled to continue these efforts because we must. We have to remind you every year about your giving. We must ask you each year uh, to reflect upon your commitment and your dedication because these are the facts. Again, not even considering the pandemic that began over two and a half years ago and how it has affected church involvement and attendance and engagement, not just here but everywhere. On average, over the past decade or more, basically since the turn of the century, Christ-following, church-attending people of faith only give 2 to 3% of your net income. And while it's harder to pin down statistics on how many people actually give at all, some consultants estimate, based on hard data, that it's definitely less than two-thirds, and perhaps as low as 50%. That's only half of regular churchgoers giving to their said community of faith. Even more, just 30 years or so ago, churches received as much as 60% of all charitable giving in this country. But today, churches like JCPC receive at best only 25%. Due to increasing competition from other nonprofit, wonderful charitable organizations, just think of all the wonderful organizations in the greater Atlanta area and some of which you are involved in on a regular basis, The church receives less than half of what it used to expect each year, and that's changed in only a generation. So, the reality is that competition for charitable giving is stiffer than ever. And this reality is especially felt here at JCPC as this congregation has changed and evolved uh, over the past decade, again, since before the pandemic, causing our financial margins to become more acutely susceptible to these larger headwinds than ever before. And if nothing else, if we follow the statistics that I just talked to you about, can you fathom this congregation, this family of faith, being able to do all the things that we already do and all the things that we want to do better if only half of this congregation gives and expresses its generosity through this church. And before you jump to conclusions and think that this is a Presbyterian problem, know this, that it's not a Presbyterian problem. It's not even a mainline Protestant problem. This is an across-the-board challenge uh, with all churches, with all denominations, with all faith-based organizations. Other nonprofit organizations are simply beating us. And generally, studies show that they win our dollars by proving that they are more fearless as human change agents and how they make an impact in the lives of real people. Consider for a moment the commercials for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Whether you've seen them at the movie theater or on your, your TV at home, you know how they do. Starts with that music. And they, they lead in with scenes and a story about a sick child and their family and how, uh, because of their circumstances, St. Jude's was there for them. And uh, we learn in less than 60 seconds that uh, the sick child was ultimately cured or at least their lives were improved in some uh, major way and the family is happy. They're relieved Uh, They're thankful, and we see proof of it in one commercial spot. Nonprofits like St. Jude's tell their success stories and raise enormously large sums of money because they are human change agents. And right now, I hope that you're thinking in your head, but wait a minute, aren't we also human change agents? 
We believe in Jesus Christ, the biggest, most fearless, impactful human change agent in the history of the world. Amen? Amen. And we are his followers. We are the body of Christ, and we do so many wonderful things here at JCPC in Christ's name. We do so many things to fearlessly, positively impact people in places near and far. And like I said, we want to do even more with your generosity. So what are we doing wrong? Why does it not work out for us like it does for St. Jude's? Well, I firmly believe that it has a whole lot to do with how people understand what the church is, how we define what the church actually is. Because people don't know what the church really is. And all too often, people think of a church, this church or any church, as a building or a set of buildings with a physical address. And at that physical address, like ours here on Bell Road, there exists a church staff who reads the mail, answers the phones, pays the bills, makes sure things like this are ready to go on Sunday morning and so many other things. And on average, the cost of said buildings and staff accounts for as much as 80 to 90% of a church budget. It's a whole lot. For uh, transparency's sake, at our church here at JCPC, that amount of money for uh, facilities and personnel accounts for about 86% of our overall budget. And here's the catch. While buildings and staff are crucial to the ministry of a church, people do not typically want to give their hard-earned dollars to facilities and personnel budgets, no matter how much you like us. Because facilities and uh, personnel budgets may make a, a significant difference in the lives of people, but buildings are not fearless. Buildings don't do anything to make a real difference in someone's life. People do. You do. All of you do make a difference in the lives of real people. So this is exactly why I want to deeply impress upon you this morning that the church is, is not a destination, the church is not a place, it is a people. The church is a living, breathing, moving body of fearless people of faith who make the wonderful choice to be connected and have relationships with other fearless people of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Indeed, the church is, as I already said, the body of Christ in this world. The church is a community of faith, hope, love, and witness made of living, breathing, fearless people called by God to demonstrate the gifts of the Spirit to the entire world. Together, we are the church. Together, we are the body of Christ. Together, we are human change agents. And only together can our dedicated fearless faith positively impact the lives of real people. Only together can we truly make a difference in Johns Creek, the greater Atlanta area, and beyond. Over the past four weeks, through a variety of sermons and reflections, fearless faith has been our stewardship theme. And we have been exploring how our fearless faith can positively impact our living, our loving, our praying, our serving, and now our giving. With the hope and the prayer that each of us might discover or rediscover in exciting and joyful ways that being a fearless part of the body of Christ is something we are grateful for in our lives. That it is something we want to actively participate in in some way as a person of faith. And that it is something we want to dedicate ourselves toward and fearlessly give back to right now in this season of transition next year in 2023 and beyond. Now today, on this Dedication Sunday, I ask you to embrace how, as the church, we are a people willing and ready to give 
fearlessly. We are ready to do that as a way of celebrating all that we are able to accomplish together through our generous response to God's blessings in our lives. Because it is through all the ministries under the categories of worship and education and discipleship and mission, and especially through our service, both within and without these walls, that we truly are the church. That we truly are the church together, living out our call to be a community of faith, hope, love, and witness. And it is through these endeavors and more uh, that we may find those things that truly are worthy of our dedication. We are the church. We have been the church. We are the church right now, and we will continue to be the church tomorrow and every tomorrow. We are the church, all of us united together and connected to each other through our sacred relationships. And it takes every single one of us, it takes every part of the body, as Paul talks about in his epistles, to, to healthily function together, to do what it is that we are called to do. But you know it as well as I do. All too often, the world around us doesn't see Christ in our actions. Uh, they don't hear the gospel in our words. I'm not talking so much about JCPC. I'm just talking about faith communities these days. It's a struggle for us to not let ourselves reflect all that dysfunction that goes on outside these walls. Because we're called to be something different. We are called to be something better. Because togetherness, unity, community. We are called by Christ to these things, and Jesus issues the call to unity in the Gospels, and the call is repeated throughout the New Testament time and time again. We even heard that language in Psalm 122 today, because it is in our unity that we gather from different places and, and different callings and different experiences and have different opinions and we take the fragments of our lives and we put them together to make something whole, to make something holy, to make something that we are called to make in Christ's name, to the glory of God. And it is in our unity then, it is in our togetherness that we are reminded of all the great work that God is doing. If for you, this describes what Johns Creek Presbyterian Church is and can be, then I ask you again, is it worthy of your dedication? Now, there's one last thought I want to share with you related to the ideas of being together, being connected, and being dedicated as fearless servants of the Lord and how all of it relates to how we express our generosity. Clarence Jordan was a farmer a Baptist preacher and a New Testament scholar who lived in the middle of the 20th century down in southwest Georgia. You may have heard of his name because among, a, among all of his accomplishments, he was instrumental in the founding of Habitat for Humanity. But for our purposes here today, he was also a wonderful author, and he once beautifully captured in words from a more contemporary perspective what it means to be connected through our relationships and united together as part of what God is doing and, uh, and how God is moving in the world. He wrote about how Jesus Christ once gathered together an unlikely bunch of God's children, 12 people who could not have been more different, joined together to prove to the world what the gospel of Jesus Christ can accomplish, not in spite of our differences, but because of them. And speaking about the 12 disciples, the original apostles and fearless human change agents we read about in Luke's passage this morning, uh, Jordan wrote this. Let's see. When you read the list of these 12, you find some interesting characters in it. It's pretty heavy with fishermen, but fishing was the major occupation of that day. Other occupations and other ideologies are reflected in the list. Jesus chose Matthew. Now that's an unfortunate choice for a man who's trying to get a popular movement going. 
Matthew was one of the most unpopular men of Jesus' day because Matthew was a publican, a tax gatherer for the Romans. Publicans almost without exception were Jews, renegade Jews collecting taxes for the hated Roman government. And then, to top it off, Jesus chose a guy by the name of Simon the Zealot. We know the creed of the Zealots from history. No king but Jehovah, they would not recognize the Roman emperor. No lawgiver but Moses, they would not accept the decisions of the federal supreme court over in Rome. And no tax but the temple tax. Can you imagine patriotism on a higher plane than that? One of the things you had to do when you became a zealot was to take an oath that if the opportunity ever afforded itself, you would assassinate publicans. Now, Jesus chose Matthew the publican and Simon the zealot. I'll bet you one thing, Jared writes. On more than one night, Jesus had to sleep between those two boys. (laughs) The only thing that kept Simon's knife out of Matthew's ribs was Jesus. But if Jesus could make Simon the zealot and Matthew the publican walk down Main Street in Jerusalem, holding hands and calling one another brother then the God movement was here. Jerdon has a whole lot of good things to say in his writings. And what I just read to you, that is the legacy to which we are all called as fearless people of faith, to be like those original disciples, because like them, we too are fearless human change agents for Jesus Christ. We, too, are doers of the word, not just hearers, fearlessly practicing our faith through both our actions and our words. We, too, are a dedicated people who believe in a boundless God that lovingly accepts us all, a people who are therefore built up and strengthened by our diversity and by our differences, as people, uh, a people who are connected by sacred relationships in Christ's name, who can hold each other's hands and can call each other sister and brother. We too are a united people doing our best to make a difference and live out the gospel in the 21st century. We true, truly are the church. We are a community of faith, hope, love, and witness. We are changing lives through all the ways that we demonstrate the gifts of the Spirit. Once again, does this describe what it is that you value so highly about Johns Creek Presbyterian Church for which you will fearlessly give your time, your talent, and your money? My hope and prayer is that it is. Because our church needs your dedication. It needs your commitment. It needs your generosity. And it needs your fearless giving now more than ever. I know this service is already running long. And I might have just preached the longest sermon I've ever written. But I'm going to do something that might seem a little odd to you. In just a couple of moments, I'm going to sit down back there and stop talking. It's going to be silent in here. But during those moments, I invite you to take the time to pray, to dream, to consider a particular vision in your imagination about JCPC and how you can give fearlessly to our ministries for the next year. Hopefully everybody has the pledge cards and the time and talent forms. If you've already completed your stuff, then hold it in your hands and pray about it. Possibly write down something that you can do to show your fearless faith in the next year. If you haven't filled any of it out, do it. Maybe you even hear God's voice speaking to you this morning to revise what it is that you've already brought with you. No matter what. Take the time, I'll step back up here, and I'll invite you during the middle hymn to come forward and put your uh, cards and forms in that basket. So for now, pray, dream, and imagine.
from the bottom of my heart, I want you to hear me say these words. Thanks be to God for each of you. Thank you for all the ways that you love this congregation. Thank you for all the ways that you will serve this congregation and Christ in the coming year. Thank you for your fearless faith, for your fearless loving and your fearless praying and your fearless serving, and most of all, thank you for your fearless giving. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit, to sing the middle hymn, and to come forward and to show your act of commitment. Brothers and sisters, we gather in this place and we take joy in it. We gather so we can hear God's word and remember each week what it is that we are called to do and then sent to do in God's world. We remind one another of that central message in our affirmation of faith so that we go out into the week and live as Christ would have us live. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. In life and in death, 
we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed, and blessing the children, healing the sick, and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. When we come together as God's church, as the body of Christ, we have the opportunity and the privilege and the responsibility to pray for one another in God's world, in our nation, and on our family of faith. Let us go to God in prayer. Most generous God, we joy when we go up to your house. For us this day, it is this house. We gather as many tribes and in many places, dedicating our lives to you. We seek peace and felicity that our prosperity be a grace we share generously this day as we dedicate ourselves and our time, talent, and treasure this year. Transform our broken human hearts, shaped by the world into hearts like Christ, so that we become fearless to give of our resources, time, priorities, and commitment. When we face the amazing grace you bestow us, and we stand in our sanctuary among the flags that remind us of your guiding hand in our history, we open our eyes to a changing world. Make us good stewards that set the example. As we imagine all that we can do to serve those in need and we open our eyes and discover folks calling out for help, help us be fearless. Remind us that your son called those we named disciples or followers and he named them apostles, ones who are sent. Remind us that being called to follow means being trained to be helpful and generous so we and our resources can be sent to help outside these walls. Make us people who make a difference in the lives of real people. Make our church, our people, fearless people of faith, one dedicated to faith, hope, love, and witness to demonstrate your love to this world. Send your spirit today as you have throughout the ages to embolden us with courage and compassion. Make us eager and trusting that what we give you will transform us and your world for good. Make us holy through our faithful dedication, set apart to do your work all of our days. Make us doers of your word and not hearers only. We pray this in the name of your Son who gave his life for us fearlessly, as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Each week when we offer of our gifts, we don't just offer the, the monetary things, but we take the time to rededicate ourselves for the coming week, to remember the promises that we've made in the previous year on Dedication Sundays of what we were going to give of our, our time, our talents, and our resources in every way possible. You can do that either during this time in the offering plate as it comes around. You can always do it online and any time coming by the church, but we offer you uh, this time to be in prayer and to be dedicating yourself to what you have been called by God to do. Will the ushers please come forward?
Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that have been made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That was a whole lot of Reformation in one service, but boy was it fun. 
Thank you to Heidi and Christian in the choir. Thank you to our guest musicians for the bagpipes, the drums, and the cello. Thank you to Alice Ann for being a great liturgist and to Don for the children's message and to Brian, as always, for contributing to the liturgy. Thank you to all of you for being here to worship God today and for anyone who is worshiping online. We're so very grateful that you are worshiping with us in that way. Now, my friends, as we go from this uh, time and place to face the joys and the challenges of the coming hours and days ahead, remember, we are all called and commanded to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. So go. Go and love each other. Practice kindness. Be a good neighbor. Be generous. Be humble. Build bridges. Forgive your enemies. Seek justice and extend grace to those around you. Whatever you do, wherever you go, remember, we are called to also have a fearless faith. May it help all of us uh, love more fearlessly, pray more fearlessly, serve more fearlessly, and give more fearlessly. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may it be so. Amen.